Hello, good morning kids, welcome to class. It is a beautiful thing to have you here with me online. I just want to welcome you to this class and then um, today we're going to be talking or dealing on a very serious topic under the subject agriculture. Our topic for today is a classification of farm animals based on their mode of breeding. Now, in the last class, we talked about farm animals and their habitats. We classified them according to their habitat. And at this point, we're going to be talking about them in their mood of breeding. When you hear the word breeding, what comes to your mind? Breeding simply means the way by which farm animals produce their young ones. All right? Now, at the end of this class, you should be able to define the term for me, breeding and also understand the various ways farm animals give birth to their young ones. All right? Now, oh wow, before us is the term breeding. So let's define breeding again. Breeding means the way farm animals produce their young ones. And there are some animals who produce their young ones alive and in their own shape and their form, right? They provide breast milk for their young ones one, when they are born. The examples of such animals are cows, sheep, goats, pig, rabbits, and the horse. Most of these animals are called mammals. And then we we'll repeat again. We're going to read just the first um, point here. And then we're going to read out just the meaning of farm of breeding as pertaining farm animals. All right. And then the word breeding, everybody let's read together. Breeding means the way farm animals produce their young ones. Again, breeding means the way farm animals produce their young ones. All right. At this point, we're going to be talking or discussing the ways farm animals produce their young ones. Now, from where we establish, we establish the fact that we have both mammals and also they are non-mammals. We are going to be talking about them in this page. All right? So the mammals, these are farm animals that give birth to their young ones alive and feed them with milk from their udder breast. Their body are covered with hair and they are warm blooded animals. Examples are goats, sheep, pigs, and cows. ETC. Now, if you walk around your streets or in your area where you stay or walk to school and all that, you will definitely see these animals on the road. All right, or there might be some in your area, or you would have a well organized farm for them or a ranch wherever it is, in your them, please identify these animals. And um, sometimes while walking on the street, you can actually see them with your young ones too, all right? So let's move. What are the non-mammals? If you understood what mammals are, they give birth directly. They produce their young ones in their form. They produce their young ones in their own shape. You can actually see the eyes, you can see the ears, you can see the nose, you can see everything. Just a replica of the one that gave birth to them, which is the mammal. All right? So we move over to the next one, which is the non-mammals. Uh, they are farm animals that give birth to their young ones through egg laying. Let's repeat our let's read together. What are non-mammals? All right, everybody, come on. Uh, Juan, let's read together. There are farm animals that give birth to their young ones through laying of egg. Victor, come on, let's read together. There are farm animals that give birth through their young, to their young ones through egg laying. Akuna, let's read together. There are farm animals that give birth to their young ones through egg laying. All right, everybody, let's chorus it together. There are farm animals that give birth to their young ones through egg laying. That's good. Go on, give yourself a clap wherever you are. All right, let's move quickly. We are going to understand how to identify them. Their bodies are covered with shells. Talking about the snails. Their bodies are covered with scales and feathers. 
they are both warm and cold blooded now for example if you look at the poultry birds they are warm blooded and then when you talk about the fishes they are what cold blooded because they stay in water water is their natural habitat all right so they remain cold until they leave the water or maybe they enter a pot so we fry them or boil them and then eat them and then they'll be very delicious they remain cold until then all right the eggs later hatch into young ones all right so they keep these eggs for a particular uh, period and then they hatch them all through this period they might be brooding on the eggs and stuff brooding on them sitting on top of the eggs and so on and so forth and then when it's due as a when due the eggs hatch into the young ones all right so let's move over to the next slide which is our conclusion all right i believe that each and every one of us were well, in our houses or we have understood at this point the difference between mammals and then non-mammals and also we have understood what the term breeding is i'm going to ask us the question that will be the first thing we're going to sort out when we come to school on tuesday when we meet i'm going to ask you and then you're going to define for me i think that's what you're going to do before you enter my class all right okay let's move to the next one the conclusion he said in conclusion farm animals either give birth directly or through eggs they either give birth directly or what through eggs we focus on farm animals that can be housed or domesticated so many other animals in the wild can also go through the same process in producing their young ones so there is no other special process those other animals go through all right so they produce their young ones through the same means just that they stay in the wild animals that produce their young ones through direct birth are called mammals and the ones that produce through eggs are called non-mammals they are non what mammals they are what non-mammals that's the animals that produce with egg they are what non-mammals and the ones that produce directly they are called what mammals Good, good, good. You're following. Now, the last note here is that all animals, including the domesticated and wild, the mammals and the non-mammals, have the ability to produce and not their young ones for a given period of time. So that means after giving birth to their young ones, they'll still go ahead to nurse them. All right, that nursing simply means that they take care of them, they provide food for them, and then they make sure they protect them from the other wide um, conditions that can actually take their life at that young age until they get to a particular point where they can take care of themselves that is when they leave their mothers all right and then that then can be defined or known as winning so when we come to class we we'll understand the term winning all right for now as we draw this session to a close um, I'll need you to take down your assignment. You will go ahead and then list animals that can be housed or domesticated. And also, you're going to list also mammals that are in the wild. And the same thing goes to non mammals. All right? You do this, and then when you come to the class on Tuesday, I'm going to see you, and then I'm going to receive you. Stay good. Until then, they come. Until then, read your notes. Until then, be good at home. Until then, be safe. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you.